Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show and this is the Penrod Challenge. We're on about episode four now guys. Uh, it's been pretty fun. We've had some pretty ec epic action, haven't yeah. we? We've had some actually some quite big fish. But the aim of the challenge really is, it's a species challenge. We're going to see how many fish we can catch on a rod that, basically a small telescopic rod that fits in to a small pen. And it extends out like that. It's about a metre long and you can have absolutely great sport on it. But, but, but. I have a bit of a confession to make. In the previous Penrod video, if you want to watch the Penrod series, we've got a link in the description. Um, but in the previous Penrod video, I did actually snap my Penrod uh, on the strike when striking into a pike. And I went too far back, didn't I? And the angle on the rod was really acute like this, like a swan neck really, wasn't it? Yeah. And it just went snap on the cast, on the uh, strike, sorry. Yeah. So look, they're only under a 10, oh, under 10 pounds, these rods. They're not going to set the world light. We're doing it for fun. But, yeah. you know, we're, we're starting to learn things now on how to strike and, you know, setting a hook and casting and things like that. The basic thing is keep that rod low. Keep it very low. A walk back is when you strike, so you're almost taking it through the reel and the top, well, not the top two sections, the lower two sections where it's strongest. But all is not lost if you snap one of these rods. Because I took one apart, the one that might bust, and I have to tell you, when you extend it like this, I'll show you there, when you extend it, all that's left on that support from there to there is barely that much, barely that much guys. So it's very, very thin. So you can see you can't put a lot of pressure on this, it's not supported here. But hey, you'd say, but I thought it was broken, Mr. P. Yeah, it's been repaired. You might just be able to see the arrow die in there. I took it apart, okay? I pushed down the broken piece here, unscrewed, just so you know, look, watch this, unscrewed the back here. I thought you could keep hooks and that in there, I thought that'd be cool. Oh, that would have been good. It would have been, but unfortunately the section slide down I see, yeah. That's hollow all the way up there. So you just push the, the, the snapped off section if you can't get it out. We won't get it out, that's why it jams. That's our new customer. We'll, just we'll, show, introduce you. Him. we'll show you in a minute a new addition to the TA The TA crew, this is Jax, and he's recently been to the vets because he's eaten a conker. Yeah. So, by the way, guys, if you're walking dogs out there, don't let them eat conkers. Uh, especially Jack Russell's because they eat what anything, anything, anything and everything. So there you go, guys. If you're in the app, you know it's not my wife. <laughs> uh, screw it back up together. You got the piece out of there. Get yourself or go to a tackle shop. See, they're bound to have some broken sections. But what I did with this one, I had an old quiver tip section. I cut it down, took the rings off, and I've slid it in here. But rather than leave just an inch there, I've got at least three inches either side of that. So I've got a lot of a lot of support through that joint. It's been arrow dieted there, which is a two-part epoxy adhesive, so it's fixed, okay? The top will slide down to just to there, short, because you can see that's the length I'm supported to here. So all is not lost if you snap them, and I've glued to about here. It will slide down to there, and what I've done is mark it, because don't forget, if you've got a pair of these rods, I mean, we just bought four, because they're so yeah, cheap, just, yeah. two each. Two rods, yeah. Just as well, really. Um, you know, you can't collapse them. Once they're glued, you can't collapse them. You can use them. And we're going to test this again. We've not given up on pin rods. No, no way. No, Where pushing, are we going? We're pushing the limits. We're off for another predator this time. You guys have been challenging us. We read all the comments. So keep feel free to uh, put in the comment section, you know, a species, suggest us some species to catch. But we are heading to Berry Hill Fisheries in, uh, in Dorking. And we fished there before. It's kind of autumn time now. It's coming into autumn. It's predator time. Mm. And we are after some Xander. Go. This is what I'm using. These are the traces you can get that are crimped to a regular barrel swivel about 18 inches long, I guess. I put an SSG shot there, and it's a single size four barbless hook, and that's what they rig they, they're using here. That's their fishery rules, and that's absolutely ideal. And really, to be honest, if you're dead baiting for pike, even you, you know me, I'm not a great lover of trebles, you can get away and use singles. Let's get it out there.
And there you go, guys. We've got two, two half baits out there. I've made these little miniature rubber wrists out of coat hanger wire and a flat block, so I knew we'd be fishing off of uh, off platforms here. And I've got one at the front. They've got a nut, pre-drilled nut, sunk and glued into those two blocks. And we put the rod in the rubber wrist, all miniaturised. There's my line. I can't even see the line. I can't even see the rod ring. Where's my glasses? Have I got any line? <laughs> it's there. There we go. Same as normal. I just got that slightly back a bit there. And what is that you're using as a, a bobbin? It's a piece of washing up bottle, you know, washing up it's liquid top. Yeah. With a hole drilled out of it there. We'll show you how to make them in a future video. And I've cut it down to make it light and it just, just weighs like nothing. And I've got the reel here on backwind as well. And I'm sitting right next to the rod. Yeah, because the drag setting on these is interesting. It leaves a lot to be desired. Well, we're here in the swim, we're all set up. Uh, Mike's in one peg, I'm in another peg. We showed you the rigs here. Baits are just going to be the front half sections of roach. Now you buy these in packets like this. I know because it says roach on the top of the packet. <laughs> you get them in the tackle shop there. We find just half sections. Who knows? It's the first time we've been here for a year, so you never know. But what we're going to do is I've got some of my uh, four mil pellets, some leftover ground bait there from fishing last night when I was carp fishing. But going to add some of this. That's our trusty Raptor fish oil. I imagine Mike's not going to want to mix this up. <laughs> Certainly won't eat a sandwich after it. No. The trouble is, you've eaten your sandwich, you <laughs> haven't eaten mine yet. So I'm going to mash that up in there. Oh dear, I'm not really looking forward to this. Is that a stick? No, that's better than that. I've still got to throw it out there. Mix it all in there. This should have a biohazard sign on it. Yeah, it should do. <laughs> so should Mike's clothes, I should think. <laughs> but that just also might bring the small fish around. Check that out. It might just bring the small fish around and it should, when we drop it over the side, leave a bit of a film of surface because I'm a great believer in even the predators can actually smell food, fish, whatever. So it's got double, double edged here and all these little particles might increase our chances of bringing the roach into the swim and the predators coming after them or indeed the predators might even smell that oil. I just kind of put it in the water just to give you an idea, we'll see if there is any oil coming off of this. There we go. Look at the way it explodes and spreads. There's a little bit of cloud bait in there as well. And you can see the oil. I don't know if you've got to see that zoomed in there. I'll do it again. In fact, it's easier if I wash the jar out, you can see the oil there. There, that should. There, there you can see it. And that oil is going to come off the ground bait. Particles there, and who knows, we may even get lucky. Another species another on the predator, little, another predator. A long, on the little pen, pen rod, we've been challenged by our subscribers. And we keep catching. And at Berry Hill, we're at the perfect time of year, coming in now, October, for Xander, which are generally a nighttime predator. You can tell by the big eyes they've got there. Well, hopefully, it'll be the first of a few. We're getting into the, uh, the bite time now, as they say. But I'm really, really chuffed to have another species on the little pen rod. Shows and, it works, uh, doesn't shows it? Shows that it works, yeah. I, you know, you can get them on traditional tackle, but sometimes it's good fun to go light. Do something different. And do something a little bit different, yeah. Awesome. Look at the eye on that. Really, really awesome fish. Lovely sort of silver colour to it as well. But we'll get it back, and hopefully... Off it goes, there we go. Get a few more.
Well, guys, I couldn't let Mike catch all those fish, could I? All one of them, I've got one myself. Just about three. And the pen rod, I'm joking about, I just seem to wind them straight in. I'm not quite sure what's happening here. But there you can see it. Oh, now I can feed him. Now I can feed him. I don't want to lose him in the, the rushes. Uh, uh, little tip I would say, if I don't lose this fish, you'll think I'm an expert, is keep that rod quite low like that with the fish. I wouldn't pull it right back because I feel yeah, it's going to break. But this is uh, quite a nice one. You know, just look at that. Eh? <laughs> I'm not going to net that. I'm not going to mess around. I'm not going to mess around. Get it in the net, boys. Oh, just look at that for a pen rod. That's ridiculous. No trouble at all with a tiny little rod like that. Look. That's a really good one. <laughs> it's a good fish, isn't it? Yeah. It's ridiculous. There's your bait as well. Yeah, get the bait back as well. Yeah. That's what I call economy fishing. <laughs> well, you might wonder, you could think it's you could think it's the fact it's getting dark, you could think it's our skill, but in fact it's lucky day from the tackle shop. Every time he stands near us, something happens. And this one, I'm gonna call I'm calling this this sand, I'm gonna call it. Lucky Dave, if, lucky I, guy. If, I, if I catch another one this size, it's yeah. going to be called Lucky Dave. Lucky guy. There we go, if you lay still. What a peat. That's a nice looking fish. Do you know, we, we, we've had some different fish on those pen rods, and it's just bizarre, isn't it, Mike? You just, the, the size of fish as well we've had. The size of fish you catch with them, I don't know, I, don't, I really don't understand it. We've not been in any trouble really at all with them, luckily, at the moment. But that's a nice looking sander. I'm going to keep him out of the water long, let's get him back. There you go, I'm just gonna lower him down in the net. Just let him recover in a second in the net there. He was pretty frisky this one, I have to say. Let's get him out. He is pretty frisky. Graham, hold the landing net, I'm gonna lose it. There we go. Well, that's an event. That shows you the pen rod works. Two of them, we've missed a few other runs and we might. Yeah. Away you go. What's next? <laughs> Brilliant. You ain't fitting in. Oh, <laughs> you had a result there. He's woken up now. He's woken up. Look at that. <laughs>